Good guys. This is Professor Nelson of Electronics. Today we are going to talk about MOSFET transistors. These components, as you can see, have three terminals. One, two, and three terminals. As for their appearance, you may find them larger. That's right guys, you can find them in larger sizes. That means that these will handle more current than the smaller ones. MOSFETs were built to handle large amounts of current. Unlike their relatives, the BJT transistors. These MOSFET transistors, they present terminals with different names than BJTs. Pin 1 is the G or gate. Pin 2 is the D or drain terminal. And pin 3 is the S or source. Now if we look at the symbol, we can see the distribution of the terminals. We have the gate terminal, the source terminal, and the drain terminal. And we have in-channel and p-channel transistors, which are slightly different. The in-channel one is made to deliver negative current. And the p-channel is made to deliver positive current. As for the activation signal, this will depend on whether they are in-channel or p-channel. In order to talk in more detail about the MOSFET, it will be necessary to talk about its internal structure. Very well, let's go see that. What you are seeing is the internal part of a MOSFET transistor. Inside it, we have the three terminals that can be seen on the transistor. The structure we are looking at is that of an in-channel transistor. This entire area would be the substrate or p-type piece. That is to say positive. And we have source and drain, which are negative. There is no contact between source and drain. Since at this moment we have a high resistance between drain and source. The gate in this case is isolated from the source and from the drain. Since it has a cape, this layer here, which is an insulator, which does not allow current to flow from the gate to the drain, or from the gate to the source, there is no current. So how does it work? Well, the MOSFET transistor works like magnets. The p-type wafer or part has voids or positive charge. And in the case of the gate, we must apply positive tension to it so that these holes or positive charges are repelled or moved downwards. For example, if we put a positive voltage of 1 volt, and since we have positives both in the gate and in the wafer or p-type piece, well, these charges will repel each other, causing the gaps to move downward or to the bottom of the wafer or positive part. So many holes will end up moving. And what would remain would be the electrons or negative charge. So negative would remain there. Beginning to form a path or channel. This path or channel will present resistance. A resistor whose value will depend on the voltage that we put on the gate. We can say that we would have a mega ohm when we have little voltage on the gate. Now, if we put more voltage, then the resistance will go down. And instead of having a mega ohm, we can have maybe a hundred kilo ohm. That is to say, The path will be formed and will be almost complete. But there will still be high resistance. MOSFET transistors ask or request that we set voltages greater than 4 volts. For example, 4 volts is what the data sheet asks for. By having that, well, this resistance could go down to 100 ohms. 
100 ohm resistance, so the path is almost complete. It's much better than before. And therefore the current can pass from the source to the drain. Only we still have a resistance of 100 ohms. To further reduce this resistance, we will have to increase the voltage at the gate even more. The maximum allowable voltage or suitable voltage is 12 volts or 10 volts. If we put 12 volts, we put more positive tension. Therefore, there will be a larger force that pushes the holes of the wafer or p-type part. And therefore, there will be more electrons forming the channel or path, further reducing the resistance between the source and drain. That's the channel. This channel now no longer has 100 ohms, since its value will drop much more. According to the data sheet, we would have 0 0.017 ohms. Quite a small resistance which is very good. Now since we have that voltage applied to the gate, with which we obtained the channel or path that connects the source with the drain, the source must be connected to negative, and the drain must be connected to the light bulb or load, and from here to positive. In this way, a current will appear in the source. This current of electrons may cross the channel or path to the drain. And from there you can reach the focus, in which all the voltage will drop, since there is very little resistance here. Thanks to the voltage in the gate. And remember that there is no current between the gate and the source or drain. Now we can see this property with the multimeter. But if we apply negative, at the hatch, if we apply negative, that path will disappear. It is eliminated and the holes or positive charges appear. And this will increase. Going back to the 100 mega ohms again. And that is how the MOSFET transistor works. Well, now we can test the operation of the MOSFET with the multimeter. Well, guys, in this case, I have two transistors one in channel and the other P channel. The thing is, which of these is which? For that we are going to use this breadboard. And we are going to place the transistors and make the measurements. We put it there. The diode multimeter. And let's start with the measurements. The tips can be random. So since in the MOSFET between the gate and the source it should not measure. Let's try to find the diode, whether on the P-channel or the N-channel. Let's see, first terminal 1 positive, terminal 2 negative. There is no measure. Terminal 3, there is nothing either. We move to terminal 2. There we have the measurement of a diode. We invest, and there is nothing. We come back again. So we have negative on terminal 3. The negative would be this one here. Therefore it would be the source. The positive would be the drain. It is supposedly a P channel. So here we would have to give it negative. We put negative there. Positive here and negative here. And it should generate the channel or path of almost 0 ohms. Let's see. Negative at the gate. Positive at the source. Negative I move it. There we have zero ohms. And vice versa. Zero ohms. Now to delete the channel. We have positive. And then we measure. Diode. 
and it gives us high resistance. This transistor is P-channel. Same for this one. Negative at terminal 1. Positive on terminal 2. Nothing. Terminal 3. Nothing. We move this one. There we have the diode. Terminal 3 positive. Terminal 3 positive of the diode. Negative terminal on the drain. Which would be terminal 2. Therefore, positive in the gate. Positive in terminal 1. Negative at terminal 3. I move to terminal 2. And we have zero resistance. We invert the tips of the multimeter. Zero resistance, which is very good. Now to open the circuit. Terminal 3 positive. Negative to the gate. We review. It tells us the value of a diode. High resistance. That's very good. This way they will be able to know if it is an in-channel. We have in-channel and p-channel. This way you can tell if it is a p-channel or in-channel MOSFET. Well guys, that's all for today. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.